Hey guys, uh, for this video I'm coming to you from my living room and this is about my dog, Cooper. Um, so here's Cooper and he is a chocolate lab and he's kind of a little camera shy I guess. He's looking away from the camera, that's okay though. Uh, those of you that are, oh, oh, he's, oh he's getting his toy, that's good. Alright, those of you who uh, may have labs, you know they come in basically three colors. They come in black, they come in chocolate, and Cooper's gone. And they come in yellow. And it's actually sort of an interesting genetics problem to figure out. You can actually predict what color Labrador puppies will come out based on their parents. And that's what I wanted to show you guys today. All right, so how is coat color in labs controlled? Okay, this is something called epistasis. All right, and here we go. Epistasis is where there are two genotypes that are controlling a single phenotype. All right, coat color in labs is a great example of this. There are other examples, but again, two separate genotypes, depending on what the alleles are for each genotype, controlling one phenotype. Okay, let me show you what this looks like a little bit. So here we have our genotypes. You guys can see we have uh, black fur, black chocolate fur, I should say, represented by the Bs. Okay, so capital B be the allele for black. So to have black fur, it'd be homozygous dominant. Um, to have, let me get a little pointer here. There we go. All right, uh, to be heterozygous, the black dominates the brown, you'd have black fur, and to be homozygous recessive, you'd have chocolate, you'd have brown fur, okay? But there's this other set of genotypes down here. Now, how do they work? This is the epistasis thing. These E's, the gene represent, these alleles represented by the E's, they will override those B alleles. Let me show you what I mean. If the dog also gets uh, homozygous dominant for, for the E gene, it will have no yellow genes and basically it defaults to whatever these B genes are indicating. Okay, so you have a black or a chocolate lab, all right? If that E gene is heterozygous, there'll be a carrier for the yellow gene but still defaults back up to this, okay? This gene is controlling their black or their chocolate. If, however, the dog received one recessive uh, E allele from mom and one recessive E allele from dad, they'd be homozygous recessive, that will then mask and cover up and make the dog yellow and will cover up whatever alleles are up here and make it possibly black or um, brown. That won't matter because the E takes over and that will uh, cover up that and you'll have a yellow lab. All right. So what does all that mean? Okay, before we get to that, let me switch to a different screen here. Before we get to that, take a look at this. So based on what I had just told you, let me get rid of some of these annotations I had on here. Um, to have black fur, okay, you, well, you have to have at least one capital B, so you can be homozygous dominant for that, or you can be heterozygous for that. And then over here at this E, you just, you cannot be homozygous recessive. Being homozygous recessive would make it yellow, so anything could be at that second position. Okay, that's how you would have black fur uh, to be a, uh, a Labrador retriever. All right, and how can you have chocolate fur, or brown fur, I guess I should say. So this is my dog Cooper, who as you guys saw, wasn't really having being on the video. But they have to be homozygous recessive for that B gene. And then again, they must be heterozygous for that yellow gene. Um, so it'd be a carrier for that, indicated by, or they could be a carrier or not. You know, you guys know what this means. This means they could be this, or they could be heterozygous for that E gene. That's what that's talking about when I leave that little underscore mark there. I think you guys remember that. Finally, how do you be a yellow lab? Well, it really doesn't matter what's at that B position. It's the fact that they are homozygous recessive for that E gene. That's what makes them a yellow lab. Okay, so you guys know they could be, they could have, it could be, uh, uh, sorry, homozygous dominant there and be this. They could be heterozygous, and it looks like they're going to be black lab, but they're yellow because that took over and made them, or sorry, it looks like they're going to be black, that took over and made them yellow. Or it could look like they're going to be a chocolate lab like Cooper, but they're not because that E gene dominates and covers up whatever is sitting at that B position. Okay, so those are our ways to be yellow, okay? Those are our ways to be chocolate. And you guys know what this up here means, okay? This means they could be, actually we have quite a few options here. You could be this, that dog could be that. Um, I guess that's really it. Oh no, sorry. They could be heterozygous for the B. 
Okay, so lots of options here. So let's practice one, and I'll leave one for you all to practice on your own. Guys, this is totally optional. Uh, if it does no interest to you, it's okay. It's just a good way to review the Mendelian genetics and just put a different spin on things. So let's take a look down here. Let me get rid of these. All right, so we need a heterozygous black lab. Okay, so heterozygous. I need one of each B who is heterozygous for yellow. Okay, there we go. With a chocolate lab, well, the only way to be chocolate is to have none of those dominant black alleles who is also heterozygous for yellow. All right, that's our cross. Now, this looks like a dye hybrid, and you have to treat it like a dye hybrid. So I'm not going to go through how to make the alleles. I'm just going to do it, okay? Um, consult your notes if you're unsure of how to do this, or send me an email, okay? Uh, and I could break it down for you. But just remember, for this pair, we need to combine every B with every E, okay? So I could have that B with that E, and that would be on the top. I could have the capital B with the lowercase E, lowercase B, capital E, and lowercase B, lowercase. And over here, I'm going to repeat the same thing twice, okay? I could have the first B with the first E, first B with the second E, and it just repeats with that second B. All right, so what do we have here? I like to keep my E's and my B's together because it just makes things a little bit easier. And guys, feel free to move the video forward if you don't feel like watching me just write in a bunch of E's. You can kind of get to the point where I'm all done writing them in. Double check me, I don't make a mistake here. Draw some lines in here to kind of keep everything straightened out. Okay, so there's our genotypes. Now let me just quickly skim through this because you guys know I sometimes make mistakes on these and I don't have you guys right here to let me know. So let me take a look here. I mean, it looks pretty good. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what our possible genotypes. Let me move this out here. Let's take a look at our phenotypes here. So uh, let me change colors here and do a highlighter maybe. Um, let me highlight all the ones that'll be yellow. So all the ones that'll be yellow will have... They'll be uh, heterozygous recessive for that E uh, genotype, okay? So these are the ones that are yellow. Oh, that guy's yellow. And that's it. Okay, so what would we say? Let's just do that one first. That one's easy, right? Let's say the chance of having a yellow lab is 4 out of 16, which you guys know is the same thing as saying 1 out of 4, okay? So 25% chance of having a yellow lab. All right, let's, take, let's do chocolate next. We know to be chocolate lab, uh, there have to be two lowercase b's, and we've already ruled out the yellow with the e stuff, okay? So I'm just going to scan for lowercase uh, lowercase b's, and so I got one here, two, three, four, five, six, it's like six, right? So six out of 16, and you guys, you could break it down if you want to, you could say, you know, three out of eight if you want, uh, for being chocolate. And to be a black lab, it should be whatever is left, but let's just double check it. So we need at least one capital B and at least one capital E. So one, two, three, four, five, six, not those, six. Six out of 16, which is, again, three out of eight. Let's double check. Six plus six is 12, plus four is 16. I counted all the boxes. Uh, it looks to be right. So guys, those would be the chances if you were to cross those two dogs, and I'll just circle the ones out of 16. That way we can add them up and see that I didn't miss any here. Those would be the chances of having these different kinds of Labradors. Okay? So guys, that's epistasis. Uh, two or more genotypes controlling the same phenotype. I think it's interesting. I just want to give you guys a little bit of practice. This definitely practices the Mendelian genetics with you as well as uh, doing that dye hybrid cross. So let me go back to this and give you guys one to try. Okay, so guys, here's one for you to practice. I want you to cross a yellow lab who's heterozygous for the black genotype with a homozygous black lab that is a carrier for the yellow gene. 
Okay, so go ahead and try that one out, and I'll get the answer posted to you, um, you know, maybe tomorrow. All right, and as you guys can tell, Cooper is super excited about being in this video. All right, uh, guys, keep checking class, and I'll keep putting new things up there. Email me with any concerns that you may have.